are watching Darasa Online. Hello, student. Welcome to the Darasa Online. I'm Madhu Gegema, a biology teacher. I'm going to present it to you a topic known as Geisha's Exchange and Respiration. Geisha's Exchange and Reciprocation. A subtopic known as reciprocation. Respiration. Particularly, we are going to discuss a part of the electron transport chain. Dear student, the respiration process is warrant in the lesson one. We said it has three major stages. The first stage being the glycolysis, then the Krebs cycle, the last, the electron transport chain, which I'm going to present it in this moment. Before we proceed with the electron transport chain, let us remind a bit on the glycolysis. Because the raw material for the electron transport chain are coming from a glycolysis and from the Krebs cycle. The product of glycolysis, glycolysis, are it produces Pa. This is a pyruvate molecule. So it produces two pyruvate molecules. Produce four ATPs in which two are paid back for the initiation process. We remain with a net of two ATPs. Then there are two NAT, reduced NAT, are produced. These are the energy carrier molecule, which are then taken into the electron transport chain. The pyruvate molecule, these are oxidized in the presence of oxygen. They are oxidatively decarboxylated to produce acetyl the acetyl acetyl CoA, which is then broken down completely in the Krebs cycle to produce carbon dioxide, NAD, and fat. And here there is decarboxylation and oxy oxidation, where two NAD are produced. Then, dear student, for the Krebs cycle, the Krebs cycle, for the complete breakdown of the acetyl CoA, it ends up by producing the 6 C NAT, reduced NAT. It produces two fat, fat H2, this is a reduced fat. It also produces two carbon dioxide gas, which are given out as a waste product of reciprocation. 
Oh, so another product is the ATP. 2 ATP are produced. Dear student, you must keep on mind that for the complete breakdown of the two pyruvate molecule, two acetyl CoA enters into the Krebs cycle, one after another. So the complete breakdown of the two, it will produce the six means three per cycle and another cycle three, a total of six and one third per cycle, a total of two. Uh, the carbon dioxide will be four, two per cycle and four per two cycle. Likewise, one ATP will be produced for a single cycle. Then for the two cycle, two ATP will be produced. Then, here, we have a total number of NAD. We have six NAD plus two NAD plus two NAD. So we have a total of 10 reduced NAD. And we have a total of two reduced the fat. These are the raw material for the electron transport chain because these are the energy carrier without forgetting the oxygen. Oxygen also is a raw material. It is used as an oxidizing agent. Let us see the concept of the electron transport chain. By definition, the electron transport chain, this is a, a series of compounds in which hydrogen and electrons are carried from one electron carrier to another electron carrier from the high energy level to the low energy level. That is a meaning of the, of the electron transport chain. But sometimes it is known as the respiratory chain. Respiratory chain. Or oh, the other word, it is known as the cytochrome. Cytochrome system. So these are the alternative names to this series of reactions. A cytochrome system because it is a system which is made up of the cytochromes. The cytochromes, this, they act as their protein nature or their complex protein which accept electrons or which carry electrons from one to another. So discussing this concept in detail, let us look question number one. The question number one reads, with the help of diagram, describe the formation of ATP in electron transport chain. So now, you are aware of the raw material. Then, we need to explain how now the energy carried by this are released into the electron transport chain in the form of ATP energy. Dear student, to start with, the electron transport chain occur in the crystallize of the mitochondria. These are produced in the matrix and some in the cytoplasm. So they have to move from the matrix of the mitochondria into the crystals. So the first thing is they reduce the night and fight this move from the 
mitochondrial the chondrial matrix into the crystal then when this they move into the crystal they are oxidized where they where they are oxidized that is the nadi the nadi H2 is oxidized into nad plus the hydrogen ions plus the electrons because the two hydrogen are given out so here is two and the two electrons likewise the fat H2 is also oxidized into five plus plus the two hydrogen protons or ions plus the two electrons so when they enter into the crystal they are oxidized and this oxidation process is influenced by the enzyme known as the core enzyme Q and here the same it is under the influence of the core enzyme Q then now the oxidized nut and the oxidized fat this they return into the matrix and the cytoplasm of the cell so as they can carry more hydrogen and electrons so we remain with the protons and electrons so the protons the protons and the electrons are then carried from one electron carrier to another electron carrier are carried by electron carriers from one to the next but it is from the higher energy carrier high energy carrier to lower energy carrier in the other way we can say they move down here from the high energy level to low energy level that is moves down here as this is a move the movement of protons coupled with electrons from high energy level to low, low energy level energy is gained and lost so as as electrons as electrons and protons move 
down here energy is gained and lost some energy is gained and some energy get lost the energy lost the energy lost or in a clear language we can say the energy given out given out is used to combine the ADP present in the mitochondria and the free inorganic phosphate PI to form ATP. ATP that is the form of energy. But this in it can occur only in the presence of the enzyme known as ATPath in the presence of the ATPath enzyme. That is the ADP that is combined with the ADP combined with inorganic phosphate it gives us ATP that the form of energy then They continue moving from one electron carrier to another electron carrier down here. Finally, as the protons and electrons moves down here, they, they are received by the oxidizing agent, the oxygen, which is reduced into water. <coughs> that is Finally, the protons and the electrons are received. Finally, leaches, leaches the final, leaches the final, the final electron acceptor electron and proton acceptor which is the oxygen which is reduced into water that is the hydrogen ions or in other words we call the protons plus the electrons they combine with oxygen molecule to form water molecule because here there are two hydrogen so when we balance we have two protons or two hydrogen ions and two electrons but the number of oxygen is still quite different so to balance it we put in half so this is a balanced equation for the reduction of oxygen 
Dear student, these are the explanations, but we are required to sketch the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain, it comprises a series of the compounds. The compounds, these are the complex proteins. So we have the complex protein 1, uh, followed by the core enzyme. Q. This is also followed by the complex protein complex three, which is also followed by the cytochrome C. Which is also followed by another complex, complex 4. Here there is a complex, complex 2. So this is the system of the protein complex, which comprises the electron transport chain. Then, we have two carriers, the NAD and the FAT. So the NAD, because it contains high energy, it is oxidized. It is oxidized by the complex one, to form oxidized NAD, it donates the hydrogen ions and the electrons which are accepted by the complex one. That is, if you, uh, you remember our, our equation, this was oxidized to form NAD, plus the two hydrogen ion plus the two electrons. So these are accepted by the complex one, which are then transferred to coenzyme Q, then to complex three, to cytochrome C, then to complex four, and finally to oxygen. Here there is oxygen. There is oxygen here. So we said as the protons and electrons move from one carrier to another, energy is given out. And that energy is used to combine the free ADP and free inorganic phosphate to form ATP. But this reaction takes place in the presence of the enzyme known as ATPath enzyme. So one ATP is given out. Then this is the only carrier. And it does not contain the ATPath enzyme. So another energy is given out here by the complex three. The energy given out is used to combine the ADP and inorganic phosphate to form ATP. Another energy is given out by the complex four, which is used to combine the ADP and inorganic phosphate to form ATP. Then, the protons and electrons are finally accepted by the 
oxygen. The proton C, the proton C plus the oxygen, they form water. Balancing this equation, here is 2, here is 2, this is half, that is. So the oxygen is known as a final electron acceptor in the electron transport chain. Meaning that it finally accepts the proton and the electron to form water. So water is given out as a byproduct. Another complex, complex 2, here is where the third enters. So the third is reduced here, is oxidized here. The third to form so the electrons and the protons from the complex two are accepted by the core SMQ then they proceed with this chain to complex three where energy is given out use also to combine the ADP and the inorganic phosphate PI to form ATP then to the cytochrome C, to the complex 4, then finally to the oxygen. Dear student, you can ask yourself why these two energy carrier or the carrier molecules, they differ. This has started to the complex, to the one level below or one level lower than the NAD. The reason here, the two energy carrier, the NAD and the FAD, they differ in the energy they contain. The NAD is reduced by large amount of energy and hence it contains large energy compared to the FAD. FAD is reduced by a minimum amount of energy and hence it carries a, a little amount of energy. So from this, from this system, then NAD produce 3 ATP. So the NAD, 1 NAD H, produce 3 ATP. When it is oxidized in the electron transport chain, 1 ATP from complex 1, the second from complex 3, and the third from the complex 4. Whereby, for the third, when it passes into electron transport chain, only two ATP are given out. That is, the first is given out by the complex three, the second is given out in the complex four. So this is equivalent to 2 ATP energy. So for the NAD and the FAD from the glycolysis, the ring reaction and the Krebs cycle, the number of NAD, there are 10 in total, And in fact, there are two. So when all the ten nuts are oxidized in the electron transport chain, 
we expect to get the 380p 10 times means 30 80p will be given out for a complete breakdown of a glucose molecule whereby the fat two fatty a uh, one fatty produce two ATP. So for the two fat four ATP will be given out. <clears throat> so in totality about thirty four ATPs are given out in Sata for ATP are given out in electron transport chain. So the electron transport chain, dear students, you can see it produces large amount of energy compared to the two phase stages. Because the glycolysis only for ATP were produced a net of two because the two are paid back. So only two ATP are produced by the glycolysis. In the Krebs cycle, only two ATP are produced, a total of four for the first stages. Dear student, let us see question number two. The question number two reads, compute the total yield of ATP when a glucose molecule is respired aerobically. Let us start from the first stage. Respiration comprises of the three major stages. That is, the glycolysis, the glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. The abbreviated by ETC. Dear student, there are these three stages of the respiration. The products here ATP, only four ATP are produced by glycolysis where the two ATP are paid back, which we are used during the initiation stage. So we remain with two ATP as a net product. The La was two NAD, H2, were produced. The ring reaction also produced two NAD, uh, uh, two nad. The Krebs cycle produce two ATP. It produces also six nad, six nad, H two produces two fat. Then, here we have two ATP and here we have two ATP. But these carrier molecules, the two NAD plus the two plus the six, we have 10 NAD. 
H2. This will enter into the electron transport chain where they will be completely oxidized. And we said one nadi produce three ATP, as we see from the electron transport chain. So the ten nad H2 is equivalent to certain ATP ATPs when they are fully oxidized in the electron transport chain. The two fat, this will produce four ATP. Why? Because when one fat is completely oxidized, it produces two. So for the two fat, they will, they, they will produce four. So a total of ATP here. 2 ATP plus 2 ATP, we get 4 ATP. The SAT ATP producing electron transport chain, we get SAT 4 plus 4, a total number of SAT 8 ATP are produced for a complete breakdown of glucose aerobically. Dear student, you can also compute this by differentiating this. That there are ATP produced from the substrate. We say that is substrate level phosphorylation, where only four ATP are produced direct. And the second ATP are produced through the oxidation. So we say that is oxidative phosphorylation, where the 34 ATP are produced indirect. Means they are produced only when this energy carrier are passing through the series of the electron transporting chain. Then, let us see question number three. Dear students, question number three leads. Calculate the efficiency of aerobic respiration of glucose molecule. That is part A. Part B. Why the efficiency calculated in A is less than 100%? Dear student, the glucose molecule, glucose molecule, When respired, well respired, it produce produce thirty eight ATPs, as we have seen here. But mind you. For one more of ATP, when it is hydrolyzed, mm -hmm. it releases energy. The amount of energy released by the hydrolysis of one more of ATP is equivalent to 30.6 kilojoules. That is, when one more. of ATP is hydrolyzed hydrolyzed produce 
produces 30.6 kilojoules of energy. That is 1 ATP is equivalent to 30.6 kilojoule. Then, the 38 ATP, 38 ATP will produce 38 times 30.6 kilojoules, which is equal to 38 times 30.68 which is equivalent to 1162.80 kilojoule. That is the amount of energy produced when a glucose molecule is respired aerobically. But for the complete breakdown of one glucose molecule under experimental condition, the complete breakdown of glucose and experimental experimental condition. It produce produce approximately two eight eight zero kilojoules. To calculate the efficiency, we take the amount of energy produced by aerobic respiration divide by the actual value of the breakdown of the glucose. That is the efficiency will be equal to the amount of energy produced for aerobic respiration of glucose which is 1162.8 divided by the experimental value the this kilojoules times 100% when we divide the 2 2880 We get forty percent. When you compute this, we get the forty point four percent. This is the efficiency of an aerobic respiration. The efficiency of aerobic respiration. Question number three, part A. That is why the efficiency calculated is less than 100%. The reason is about 59.6% of energy get lost in the form of heat energy. That is this energy are not used to produce ATP energy. As you, you can trace back, dear student, some of the energy given out are used to combine the ADP and inorganic phosphate to form ATP. 
but some are given out as heat energy. That is why the efficiency is, is, is less than 100%. Actually, it is 40.4%. Then, the respiration process in the body, it ends with the electron transport chain. To conclude, the general process of respiration, we can write the following question. We have the overall overall equation for glycolysis and Klebs cycle by summarizing the general expression process dear students let us see the overall equation for the glycolysis and Klebs cycle in glycolysis the glucose molecule is completely in the glycolysis and Krebs cycle is completely broken down in the presence of water. Water is used in the Krebs cycle as a source of oxygen to produce carbon dioxide means this six carbon dioxide all the carbon dioxide from this all the carbon from the glucose are now given out in the form of carbon dioxide plus the hydrogen ions 12 hydrogen ions these are carried by the electron carriers plus the ATP. Here only four ATP are produced. Let us let this equation one. Equation two is the overall equation for electron transport chain. Where the hydrogen ion from the hydrogen carriers combine with oxygen, and here six oxygen molecules will be used to produce. To produce water molecule, 12 water molecule, plus the 34 ATP. Where this water molecule are produced? Every night, Produce one water molecule. Then in the electron transport chain, about 10. About 10 nad were used. And two fadi were used. So, let this to be equation two. Then combining the two, question one plus equation two, the protons and these protons will cancel out. The six water molecule will cancel out with this, will remain with six water molecule 
So the overall, we have the C6CH12 or 60 plus 60 oxygen molecule to produce 60 water molecule plus 60 carbon dioxide plus 34 ATP and 4 30 ATP. So this is the general equation or the overall equation for respiration. That is when one more of glucose is broken down in the presence of oxygen as a final electron acceptor, we, ex we expect to get 60 water molecule, 60 carbon dioxide, and the 38 ATP. The water molecule, these are used as a metabolic water, carbon dioxide is given out as a waste product, and the 38 ATP are used as a the energy source for different metabolic activities. I hope to this moment, you dear student, you have grasped the concept of the electron transport chain. Now, you can describe the electron transport chain by the use of the diagram, you are now able to compute the amount of ATP produced when one molecule of glucose is respired aerobically. And now you are in position to calculate the efficiency of aerobic respiration using glucose. Thank you very much for following me. I welcome you for the next lesson, which will be on the alternative respiratory substrate, where we will discuss the respiration of repeats and the respiration of proteins. Thank you very much. Bye.